Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Dear students of class 9th, today we are going to start unit number 5. The title of this unit is Daffodils. This is in fact a poem that is written by William Wordsworth. Daffodils. First of all, what is daffodils? Okay, daffodil is a type of bulbous plant that produces yellow flowers. In Urdu, we call it Nargis. Gule Nargis. Yani Nargis ka pool. This poem about daffodils has been written by a renowned famous poet, English poet. His name is William Wordsworth. He was born in 1770 in England. His passion for nature is well known. He is a true lover and worshipper of nature. That is the reason he is rightly called the poet of nature. And if fitrat pe upar ye bahut zyada likhta hai, iski poems, iske kaam jitne bhi hai, William Wards baat ke nature ke upar hai. That's why he is called the poet of nature. In this poem, the poet has uh, presented before us the healthy, positive and purif purifying impact of nature on human beings when he visited uh, somewhere where he saw daffodils. So he has narrated, narrated his experience of uh, the scene of nature and he has also uh, show, showed us that how this nature has pure impact on the nature of human beings. Right. This poem has four stanzas. First, listen carefully. Then I will explain these stanzas. I wander lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A pet could not be but a pet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For off, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bless of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills, and dances with the daffodils. Now listen the first stanza again. Then I will explain some difficult words. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over wheels and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. In this stanza, the poet says, Once I was wandering alone like a cloud. I was wandering. Wander means move about, to walk here and there aimlessly. Wandering. Lonely alone. As a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills. I was wandering, I was moving about like a cloud. 
the cloud, the piece of cloud that floats, that swims, that moves about on high over vales and hills, vales, valleys, hills, mountains. Okay, so he is comparing himself with a cloud. He says, as a piece of cloud floats, moves over the valleys and hills, uh, like that, I was also wandering, I was walking around uh, alone. When at that time, at, at once, suddenly, abruptly, I saw a crowd. I saw a crowd. A crowd of people? No. But a crowd of flowers. A host of golden daffodils. This is the explanation of crowd. That crowd was a host. Host means group. Group of golden daffodils. Golden daffodils ka ek jurmat dekha, ek group mene dekha. Beside the lake, beneath the trees. Beside the lake, beneath the trees. Beneath mean below, below the trees. Fluttering. They were beside the lake. Ek jil ke saath the and below the trees. Trees ke niche ubi huye the. They were fluttering. They were moving lightly and quickly. Flutter to to move lightly and quickly. Like the flag flutters, flag. The flag is fluttering in the wind. यानि कि फड़फड़ा ना या हरकत करना तेजी तेजी के साथ. And dancing. They were also dancing in breeze in the air. Right. Number two. Continuous. They were fluttering and dancing in the breeze continuously. As the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Now see the explanation. Continuous as the stars that shine. They were continuously fluttering, they were dancing in the breeze, and they were also shining like stars and twinkle uh, that shine and twinkle. They were looking like stars that shine and twinkle. Twinkle also means shine, tintamana, chamakna. On the Milky Way. Milky Way means galaxies. Okay. So like we see at the night time, the stars that are shining and twinkling. Similarly, these uh, daffodils were also, these golden daffodils were shining and they were continuously dancing in the breeze. They stretched in never ending line. Daffodils were stretched. They were spread. They were scattered, spread in a never ending line, very long line. Along means by the side of a margin of a bay. Margin means corner, edge, and bay. Bay means inlet, a passage of water. Okay. In other words, you can say, although this is not uh, the perfect meaning, but you can say a lake means uh, a jeel. Like in the jeel, that is called bay, khalij, gulf. So, uske kareeb, uske karnar par ye ugi huye thi, aur na khatam hone wali line mein phele huye thi, ye bahut jada tadad mein thi. That's why he says, 10,000 saw I at a glance. At a glance mean at one look, at one eye, ek dafa mein, I saw 10,000, means I saw a large number of uh, daffodils. What were yet they doing? Tossing their heads in sprightly toss. Toss, toss that you often make a toss before starting a match, cricket match, toss. Toss mean move, move here and there. They were dancing, they were moving here and there. Uh, they were tossing their heads 
in sprightly dance. They were tossing their heads into each other. In sprightly dance, sprightly means splendidly, happily, or happy dance. Okay, stanza number three. The waves beside them danced. The waves in the bay. They also danced beside them, but they means daffodils outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. Bring brought brought. Okay. The waves beside the tides that were there in the water, in water of the bay, the waves beside them danced. They also danced. But they, means daffodils, outdid the sparkling wave in glee. But daffodils outdid the sparkling waves. Outdid mean outclass, surpass, piche chordena, to leave behind the sparkling shining waves, tides. Waves be dance kar rahi thi, like in uh, daffodils ne unko piche chhod diya, un chamakti hui lehron ko piche chhod diya. In glee, in happiness, in happy mood, they left them behind. They defeated them in dance. A poet could not but be gay. Then the poet says, as he says, a poet could not but be gay, but be happy. Means shayar khush hone ke lab aur kya ho sakta hai? In such a jocund company, in such a cheerful, in such a pleasant company, he can only be gay, means happy. I gazed and gazed, I glared, I looked these, I looked these daffodils with fixed look, fixed eyes, uh, sometime, but little thought, but I thought very little that what wealth the show this display this view has had brought to me he says i saw this scene with fixed eyes but i could not think that this display this view has brought a big wealth for me what is that wealth he will tell us in the next stanza so he says for all when on my couch I lie, oft and couch, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with player fills and dances with the daffodils. For oft, oft mean here, often or often. When on my couch I lie, couch means bed. Okay, whenever I lie on my bed to sleep, in vacant, vacant means empty or in pensive mood, thoughtful mood, fikr. I fikr kar jis wakat lete huye. They flash upon that inward eye. They mean here daffodils. They flash upon. They shine. They put a sudden burst of light. Chamakte achanak se wo chamakna shuru kar dete hain. Inward eye. On my inner self. Inward eye. Inner self. Mere baatim pe. Andar ka jo mera wajood hai. Us ke upar chamakna shuru kar dete hain. Which is the bliss of solitude. And this thing is the bliss. This is the happiness of my solitude. My loneliness. Because I am that time alone, I am lying on my couch, and at that time, when I remember this scene, this scene fills my heart with bliss, with happiness, and then my heart with pleasure fills, pleasure, happiness, and dances with the daffodils, and my heart starts dancing with these daffodils. So in this way, he has told us that how some nature, some views of nature have sound impact on sound impact on human beings. Okay, now come to the paraphrasing of these uh, 
stanzas. Okay, now come to the paraphrasing of this chapter, daffodils. First of all, you must know what is paraphrasing. When we say paraphrase the stanza or explain the stanza, there is difference between paraphrasing and explanation. Explanation is something else and paraphrasing is something else. Okay, you can see here, I have written for you the definition of an explanation of paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is rewriting a poet's utterances and ideas in your own words. To paraphrase, you have to rewrite the stanza in a passage without changing the meaning of the original text. It is of the same length as the original because the purpose is to rephrase without going into any unnecessary details or explanation. So in simple, in paraphrasing, you just convert the poetic form into prose. Okay, so the length remains same, but you uh, explain that uh, poetic form in a simple passage. Here it is stanza number one, the paraphrasing of stanza number one. You will write uh, this, this paraphrasing on your notebook. Stanza number one, paraphrasing. When I went for a walk, I left, I felt like I was a cloud floating above the hills and valleys below. Suddenly I saw a huge number of daffodils right beside a lake and under some trees. They were dancing in the breeze. Paraphrasing of stanza number two. There were so many daffodils that they looked like the stars in our galaxy. The daffodils formed a line that stretched around much of the bay. In one glance, I could see 10,000 of them. They looked like they were dancing. Stanza number three. The waves in the bay also seemed to dance, but the daffodils looked happier. A pet could not avoid being happy in such circumstances. I did a great deal of gazing, but didn't fully appreciate the moment at the time. Stanza number four. Often when I am lying on my couch and feeling a bit emotionless or thoughtful, I can still see those daffodils in my mind. By the way, being able to remember is quite pleasant when you are all alone. Now, when I recall the daffodils, I feel warm and fuzzy as if I am dancing with the daffodils. Okay, here it is the end of uh, first lecture of daffodils. You will uh, note down meanings of the difficult words and you will write these paraphrasing on your notebooks. Okay, thank you.